Hello, I'm Jay Reamer, your host, and welcome to another episode of The Etiquette Guy. Today, I have with me Mary Rogers. How are you, Mary? I'm great, Jay. How are you? I'm good. It's always nice to have you here and see what you've got. What kind of questions have you brought today? Well, it's always a pleasure being with you, Jay. <laughs> I'll tell you, okay, we're going to talk about today destination weddings, the etiquette of destination weddings. Are we? They're becoming very popular and um, uh, almost as popular as the traditional church you know, uh, ceremonies. And similarly, all nuptials, you know, celebrations require a format of decorum. So with that in mind, uh, some of the um, questions that have come in pertaining to destination weddings right. are, number one, the bride and groom, are they required to pay, once they've announced that we're having a destination wedding, are they required to pay, uh, to offer to pay for getting there? the travel and then staying the accommodation. Destination weddings are a challenge today because the, you're dealing with people who want to be original and have, oh, let's, let's have a destination wedding. We want to go to Tahiti, mm. so we'll get married there. And, mm. and as, as the wedding presents, we'll get everybody to pay for our trip. So <clears throat> I think that, uh, and then of course you've got the, that uh, juxtaposed uh, to the economy. Mm. And people can't afford to do that sort of thing. So it's, I find destination weddings to be a bit of a problem. However, if you decide to have a destination wedding, um, you, you have to realize that there are costs attached to that for all of your guests. Mm -hmm. And um, you've got also the wedding party and uh, you're dealing sometimes with two sets of parents. One may be able to afford to do a, a big event like this, and the other may not. So, and it always works out that, you know, it, it, it just, it's, it's, it's always, it can be a problem. Now, traditionally, um, the bride's parents have always paid for the weddings. With these destination weddings, I, I think that's off the table now. I think that, um, and, and in, I think in a lot of weddings actually today, I think that the, the tradition of the bride's family paying for it, it's not totally logistically practical for, mm -hmm. uh, in some situations, in many situations, for lots of reasons. Um, sometimes it's because um, people are getting married later in life Mm -hmm. and they have responsible jobs and they can afford to do their own wedding and they want to call their own shots. They don't want mothers-in-laws and so forth getting in the act. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be one reason why, uh, so for, for, a, for, for a, a destination wedding, uh, can that couple really afford to pay to fly everybody someplace, put them up, feed them, entertain them for a few days. And in most cases, I would say no is the answer. So if you're going to have a destination wedding, realize that there is going to be a financial burden placed on everyone who you invite, including the wedding party. Now, if you can afford to pay for the wedding party, to fly wherever it is, or, you know, supposing you're having a, you can have a destination wedding to Grand Manan, it doesn't have to be to Tahiti. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a, that would be a, a, an inexpensive destination to go to for around here. But uh, I know the last destination wedding that I was invited to was in Bermuda. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you start adding up the time away from work, the cost of the ticket, the cost of your accommodation, and you've got to have a little running around money because, you know, you yeah. and then there's, do you buy a wedding gift or not? Mm -hmm. Is just showing up enough of a gift? Um, you know, there are all these things that you have to weigh before you decide whether you're even going to say, yes, I'll be a, a groomsman or I'll be a maid of honor or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, I mean, these financial uh, arrangements have to be settled in the beginning, because if you if you get downstream too far, and all of a sudden a light bulb goes off, and it's like, oops, I can't afford to do this. It puts everyone in a very awkward position, mm -hmm. and it's not necessary. 
uh, it can, these kinds of things can be avoided by careful planning. So I think um, each wedding is going to be unique as far as the capability and the desire for the, um, you know, the bride and the groom or, or, and, and or their parents to chip in or not. So I, there is no black and white answer to, mm. to that. I think in an ideal world, were this to have happened 50 years ago, there would have been no question that the bride's family would have paid for the whole thing. Okay. As time moves on, you know, it's, it's, well, we can pay for this part of it, or we can pay for that part of it, or we'll pay half your plane ticket and one night stay. I mean, there are all, all kinds of different combinations. And, uh, and I find them to be horribly awkward. I don't like having to talk about finances with somebody else's party. Uh -huh. If you're going to host a wedding, host the bloody wedding. Uh -huh. if, you're, if, you, if you want to have um, a bunch of people hosting this wedding, then you have to realize that that's what you're dealing with. But I think that, um, I think that if you're going to have a destination wedding, A, it's going to be small today. Mm -hmm. And you have to really think about whether this is what you really want and plan that it's going to be a financial burden for you. It's, it's very inappropriate to spend other people's money for them, mm -hmm. especially without their permission. Mm -hmm. So assuming that all of your friends are going to be so tickled that you're getting married that they're going to go diving into their life savings to come to your wedding is really in a, it's it's just not right. Mm -hmm. So I think that these things have to be really carefully thought through. I I write a blog um, every week for a wedding uh, a newsletter, mm -hmm. and uh, these destination weddings are popping up like flies. Okay, they I have. Um, you know, it, akin to the destination wedding is the honeymoon registry, you know, where you're asking oh, people. That's a to, different thing. Oh, yeah. oh so to, oh, do well, tell. Right. Well, Another well, show, let's, maybe. we'll, we'll <laughs> talk about that. But these kinds of fi large financial obligations that, that brides and grooms put on other people are just, it's just wrong. I think that the whole, the whole um, sort of integrity of the, of marriage, the institution of marriage is is a bit on, it's it's, it's being challenged um, because of these uh, of these of this what I call silliness and greed. Mm. Uh, you know, weddings are not just cash grabs or or mm. loot grabs. Weddings are totally about the union of two people, mm. and um, I I think that having it in a foreign destination or mm -hmm. like not at home kind mm -hmm. of thing I think it just put it takes away a certain amount from the real meaning of the celebration and it adds unnecessary financial burdens to everyone mm -hmm. so I don't I'm not a big fan of, 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 of destination weddings but if you're going to have them you have to be really prepared for all kinds of, of challenges what about, um, like, would you say that the couple, are they expected to entertain? Like, once people say, yes, I'm coming, I'm coming, and everyone is there, should well, they? Well, you know, in do, the old is days, that their responsibility you know, to let's, entertain? let's take, let's take the way this would have happened in the old days versus the way it's it, okay, yeah, happening that's today. It. Yeah, okay. So, imagine that you lived in a country house and you decided that you were going to have your friends, mm -hmm. say, ten couples in for the weekend okay okay mm -hmm. it's just fun you had a house big enough mm -hmm. and they're gonna come well they're not gonna just sit around and read all weekend now are they mm -hmm. unless it's a reading retreat mm -hmm. they're gonna want to be entertained and if you decide how they're gonna be entertained you have a bit more control over the whole thing and especially if you're paying for the entertainment mm -hmm. you should have control over it mm -hmm. so I think that guests do expect to be entertained rightly so and I think that you have an obligation to do that so okay. you, you, you can't just send, say, okay, well, we've decided that we're going to get married in, in, um, in Nashville, and you're on your own. The, the okay. ceremony's at four, rehearsals, uh, I mean, the, the, uh, the wedding, uh, you know, the dinner is at six, and, you know, the rest of the time you're on your own. Mm. I think that that's really very, um, 
rather cavalier mm -hmm. that people would be expected to be able to manage on their own mm -hmm. in, in a foreign place. Yes. So I'm not, I, I, so yes, I think that people do need to, because in the old days you would, it would be orchestrated completely mm. from the moment you arrive to the moment you leave. And those, those times are set in stone. Mm -hmm. The meals are all planned carefully, mm -hmm. where they're going to be, what they're going to be, who's paying for them, and all that sort of thing. Mm. So I think that you have to think along those lines. It worked then, it, it'll work now. And as soon as you start putting, changing things, mm -hmm. like, well, th then you're gonna realize that you're gonna have you're going to have issues mm. to deal with. And, and again, I think it, beco it becomes a financial thing. And I just think that when you start getting finances uh, confused with entertaining and fun things, they're both going to have a, a downward mm. uh, result. Okay. Yeah. Well, you've alluded maybe to uh, answering the next question about being the couple's responsibility for hosting pre-wedding and post-wedding events, like, for example, the rehearsal dinner or a farewell brunch. Mm -hmm. you know, once you are over in these destination places, do, is that all included, too, as part of the bride and groom's responsibility? Yeah. Well, you know, I think that traditionally mm -hmm. the groom's uh, family paid for the rehearsal dinner, mm -hmm. and if there if there was one, mm -hmm. uh, this is assuming you know that the wedding is going to be fairly traditional anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's going to be some, you know, uh, wedding out in a field with uh, three people, that doesn't really require a rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So I think, but if you're going to have a, a wedding in a church, or if you're going to have a wedding that has, you know, like a destination wedding where maybe you'll have six bridesmaids and six um, ushers, uh, and you might have 150 people mm -hmm. uh, coming to the thing. I mean, it, it, it does happen. Mm -hmm. um, then I think that, um, you know, I think that as far as the bride and groom getting involved, it, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of a tailor-made thing. It depends what they can afford and what they mm -hmm. want their guests to, what kind of a responsibility do you want to put on somebody else? I think that's really what it sort of boils down to is, is, is how much of a responsibility can you expect reasonably to put on somebody else mm -hmm. and have them come to the wedding? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you don't want it, you don't want to make it so that it's a, a burden mm. for them. <laughs> And if you're not in a position to, because you know who can and can't really swing these things sometimes. Mm -hmm. if, you don't, if you don't know them well enough to know that, then they probably question why, or why they're on the list. Mm -hmm. Although we don't know an awful lot of the, of the personal situations of, of people. I mean, people who you think may be perfectly able to afford something may not be able to at all. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the reverse is true too. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think that it should be carefully planned out. Any time mm -hmm. that you're going to have the more moving parts, the more planning uh, mm -hmm. that, and the more careful consideration that needs to be put into it with the, with, by taking the upper road, uh, the high road all the time mm -hmm. and trying to, to, to bur have the least burden on your guests as possible. But it is, it is a time, it is a day for the bride. Mm -hmm. This is her day, and it's really important that that be the focus. And as long as she can be uh, uh, thinks reasonably and understands what her responsibility is too, okay. this isn't just a free for all. The bride can do whatever she wants. Mm -hmm. This is a th there is a there is a responsibility that goes along with being a bride. Oh yeah. So destinations to avoid. I'm thinking I, in terms of language, for example, if there's a language barrier and you have all these people being yeah. somewhere, but... Well, I think that if you're, say, um, today it's not uncommon for a Westerner to marry an Asian. Mm. So, and it's not uncommon for the Westerner to go to, um, whether it's South Korea or China or Japan mm -hmm. or wherever it is that you're going, um, you're not going to speak that language. Mm -hmm. Most of us aren't. Um, so you ha it would do you well to do a little study as far as what the customs mm -hmm. uh, and traditions of that country are so that you don't make any big gaffes. Um, but I, uh, I think that, uh, you know, it's, again, it's part of the, the planning 
do we really want to put people through this? Mm -hmm. And uh, because, I mean, frankly, if I, if I were invited to a wedding uh, to a foreign country and I, and I really couldn't afford it easily, I just wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. I would just regret and send a wedding present and that would be the end of it. Mm -hmm. But I think most of the time for these, my experience has been that for destination weddings, the people who are invited are people who they really want to be there. Like this is a mm. big deal for them. They really want to do it and this is their favorite place and they want everybody to share in the fun and the excitement and all of that. And mm -hmm. it's a great big thing, but it's really a great big thing for them. And sometimes they don't think about the mm -hmm. ramifications. Mm -hmm. that it may have. So I, I, th I think it's really careful. Uh, careful planning is really critical. Careful planning. Yeah. And, a yeah. Lot, yeah. and a lot of planning too. It's not just as simple as we're going away to get married. And, well it's uh, not just a, it's just uh, not one event. I mean yeah. if you're if you're going away for say four days and there's that's four days of basically events, parties, meals that have to be you have to plan for mm -hmm. everybody that's going. Mm -hmm. and, th and that that does that takes time, and uh, and so if you decide that's what you're going to do, realize that 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 you're going to have to spend a lot of time in the planning stages, mm -hmm. or you're going to get nailed hmm. um, financially. I mean, they could, wedding destinations they they will they will accommodate you. And the 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 longer you put things off, the higher it costs. Mm, <laughs> what about um, the cost and logistics of shipping? How can we discourage people from bringing wedding gifts with them to the destination wedding? That's a good question because as you know, there's no mention of gifts on the invitation, right? Uh -huh. So the best way um, to handle that is word of mouth. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and people who have uh, access to the guest list are the ones who are likely to be the most successful at that, right? Okay. If you don't know who's invited, then you know you could wind up saying the wrong thing to the wrong person. Oh, mm -hmm. by the way, don't bring uh, your gift to Susie's wedding. Send it. Well, I'm not invited. You know, so it's important. <laughs> oh, right. yeah, it's important that note. whoever you decide is going to be the mouthpiece, uh -huh. uh, that they um, are sensitive to that, and uh, so you don't want to just say, you know, tell everybody, you know, because everybody isn't invited. Um, I think it has to be very carefully done and it's just quietly. It's kind of like, um, you know, if someone wants, they don't want any presents. They just want cash. Oh. There could be nothing, uh, th that is just absolutely sort of the bottom of the barrel as far as I'm concerned. But it's practical in this day and age and there are traditions where they have money trees and things. This is, Passing this is the quite shoe. Yes. normal. <laughs> It's not the. It's not something. I'm just not accustomed to that, mm -hmm. and I think that in those traditions, it, because they are traditions, mm -hmm. people know that that's what's expected of them. Mm -hmm. If if I were going to one of these and I didn't know that I was supposed to have an envelope full of cash to stick on a tree, I mean, how in the world would you guess something like that? Oh. You know, somebody has to tell you that these mm -hmm. things are going on. So I think that it behooves the host to make sure that numbskulls like me or people from foreign lands are, are told the way it works. But you cannot put all this stuff on an invitation. No. It has to be delivered by person. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now there, today there are wedding websites. Mm -hmm. So if you and I decided, mm -hmm. well it, we wouldn't, but let's pretend mm -hmm. um, that we decided that we were going to get married. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we wanted to have a website so that rather than have to repeat all of these directions a hundred times, oh. we can just stick it on the website and say, well, all the information's on the website. <laughs> well, we're done. I well, I'm, I'm still, I think the jury is still out a bit on these websites. I think there's an awful lot of information and it allows for um, the emphasis uh, on, the, on the thing to be on the commercialization. Yes. I think that right. it's all about, let's make it as easy as possible for people to give us stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I, it's, just, it's just not, I, I just don't like it. So I think that if you're going to have a wedding website, I would downplay the gifts. I mean, granted, do put in where you were registered. If you're registered mm -hmm. at Burks or wherever it is, put that mm -hmm. in there. But I wouldn't say I'm registered at Burks and I would like 
you know, six this, this, teaspoons this. and I want this and I want this and I want this and mm -hmm. I want the other thing. Mm -hmm. That I think is way over the top. There was, a, I was, um, I, I had to write about this uh, last week actually uh, in this wedding blog that, that I write for and it was apparently there's some famous athlete who's, oh. who's getting married okay. and uh, they are registering at, at the exotic Bed Bath & Beyond. Oh, Imagine well. registering yeah. at a place like that. I mean, I just, I mean, there's nothing wrong, I mean, with going and buying gifts there, but to set up a registry there, just I just find it completely baffling. But um, what happened was is that this list of what they wanted, this is a guy who's paid a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. um, it got put up on Facebook. And this particular individual has a lot of fans. And all of these packages started arriving from Bed Bath & Beyond. I mean, an entire room full of packages. Oh, my word. And so the question came through, is it okay to put our, our registry up on Facebook? Well, the answer to, if, if you're asking me, the answer is absolutely not. But, and, and that would be one example of why it's mm. not a wise idea. I just think that asking for gifts is just the wrong emphasis. I think that people's good wishes and prayers and all of the, the things that um, are so important to starting up a family or a household together. You know, I mean, you, it, families usually, generally, they come after the mm -hmm. wedding. But um, uh, not always, and no. sometimes, you know, on second and third sure. uh, tries, Families you know, you've there. got all kinds of, of possible combinations. But I think that um, keeping things as commercial free as possible, yeah. Okay. I think that this is a time for celebration, and I think that the gifts and all of that should definitely be secondary. Okay. Well, uh, our last question. What uh, should the wedding be postponed? if one or more of the wedding party misses their flight or the flight gets canceled on the way to one of these destination weddings? I would say, you mean like if the bride or the groom? Well, well I suppose that would be a different... That would yeah, be the only... only. That, would, <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> if, the, if the maid of honor is stuck in, a, in the airport, too uh -huh. bad. Too bad. She misses. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about your luck, <laughs> which is another, that's a that's great a question though, yeah. because you know, what, what about going down to Bermuda in September for mm -hmm. a wedding? Well, I mean, there's a good chance you're going to have a hurricane. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, you know, these things all have to be, but if, obviously if the bride or the groom can't make it, it has to be postponed. Otherwise, it does not have to be postponed. That's right. Yeah. It, no. it needs I to mean, postponing a, a wedding is out of the question. I mean, yeah. that's just one step away from being jilted at the altar. I mean, oh, you know, yeah. which we don't talk about that. Yeah. But that's, um, yeah, I would say uh, that I, yeah, no. Uh, it's, it's, if you miss the flight, you miss the flight. Mm -hmm. Sorry about your luck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these, these things, the, there has to be a reasonableness to it all. Mm -hmm. So I guess really in, uh, you know, summarizing the whole destination wedding thing, mm -hmm. I, I, I think that it is, if you decide that that's what you want to do, realize that it is a challenge uh, mm -hmm. financially to everyone involved. Mm -hmm. it's, it's cost so much more that maybe it's worth reconsidering and, um, you know, if, if you decide that you're not going to have a destination wedding and you would actually like to, you'd actually rather than have four toasters, you'd rather have money to put toward the down payment of a house or something like mm -hmm. that, there's nothing wrong with that. It just can't go on the invitation. Okay. That's where the word of mouth comes in. Mm -hmm. And word of mouth is something that's, that humans have been using since they came out of the first cave. So we know mm -hmm. it works really well. Sure. Um, you can even do smoke signals if you need to. I mean, there's, there are lots of ways of communicating information other than on the invitation. So I, I, think, that that's, I think that that's one thing. I think um, that planning every single step of, 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 the, of the four days or might be longer, mm. or might be less, but not a whole lot less. I mean, no. you've got to get there. You know, people who are going to be traveling away, they've got to get, have somebody to take care of their pets, their kids, oh. their f house plants. You know, somebody's got to water the 
garden. I mean, there's all kinds of considerations. It's a huge oh. inconvenience. Mm. Uh, a destination wedding is a huge inconvenience. But, you know, if it outweighs, you know, if the, if the reason for having it outweighs the, um, I mean, there can be incredible reasons to have destination weddings that far outweigh all those little logistical things. Mm -hmm. It's like, get out of my way, I'm having this. You know, it may be going to some sacred ground somewhere, mm -hmm. or it may be going to some place, you know, where your grandmother had, you know, was born or something, and your grandmother was your mentor. I mean, there's a million reasons to come up with we are having a destination wedding, and that is that. Oh. But realize that not everybody else is going to share that enthusiasm, mm -hmm. nor will they be able to, to uh, cope, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the, with the financial mm -hmm. end, end of it. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's really important that, that people, you know, be totally aware of what they're getting into. Now, um, one of the things uh, also is, is that uh, people often ask whether or not if you are going to a destination wedding and you're shelling out thousands of dollars for your plane ticket and your, and your hotel room, do you bring a wedding gift? And I would say that... Uh, on that basically yes you do bring something but it can be very small and just as a token <clears throat> of the of the event just so that the couple will look on the shelf and see the little whatever it is and mm -hmm. and and that you don't have to give them a five hundred dollar you know mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. or a one hundred dollar thing I mean if you're already shelling out a whole lot of cash for the, for the to get there the wedding present could be quite small okay yeah. All right. And that brings us to the end of to our the time. End. Yeah, I know. Time, time flies goes. when you're having fun. Okay. Thanks a million for uh, for coming this afternoon. Thank it was really you. It's always nice. It's amazing the the different kinds of questions that people have, isn't it? I know. So we're Honestly. lucky that uh, that and and thank you all for watching and for sending your questions in. And we look forward to having you here again on the Etiquette Guy one day very soon. Bye for now.